so good evening everyone this is lecture number eight and we are dealing with uh, mirrors what was the topic in the last class do you remember what we were discussing in the last class sure. yes sir what what sir magnification yes beta magnification yes we were discussing magnification and we had seen the first type of magnification which was known as transverse or lateral magnification in this case the object as you can see over here the object it was placed perpendicular to the principal axis do we remember this yes or no the object was placed if this is the principal axis the object was placed perpendicular to the principal axis in that case the magnification is known as transverse magnification is this the only case that is possible can i only place the object like this or is there any other way in which i can also place the object yes beta or is this the only way of placing the object tell me is this the only way of placing the object or i can place the object in a different way also i'm asking are we only and always going to place the object like this perpendicular to the principal axis or i can put it in a different way tell me i am waiting uh, will i always it, place the object like this or i can place it in a different way also we can place it in different way and what could be the next way in which i can place this object this is the principal axis how this can i place the object rather than placing it like this i can place it like this we call it along the axis we are placing the object along the axis and in that case the magnification is known as longitudinal magnification so that is the next heading and the next heading is longitudinal magnification in this case when does this case happen when the object is placed parallel to pa by by pa what i mean is principal axis when the object is placed parallel to the principal axis you can see the object here yes or no this is the object it is placed parallel to the principal axis and as you can see this is the image that i get now this magnification that we are dealing with is uh, instead of calling it magnification is better to call it as linear magnification so you can just go back to the previous side and uh, instead of magnification you can write it as linear magnification why i am calling it linear magnification because the object here is one dimensional the object here is one dimensional whether it is a line or an object like this or whether it is a line or an object like this it is a one dimensional object and therefore this magnification is known as linear magnification so linear magnification can be of two types one is transverse magnification when the object is placed perpendicular one is longitudinal magnification where the object is placed parallel is it clear to everyone yes or no can i have raise hand that uh, we understand this yes sir okay now the the ball goes into your court this linear magnification or longitudinal magnification is denoted by the letter ml l standing for longitudinal how am i going to define this how will i define this transverse magnification was height of the image divided by height of the object as you can see the object is now lying flat i cannot call it height so what is a better term rather than calling it as height 
length of the measure is length of the object yes that is correct so let me call this as lo lo standing for length of the object and li standing for the length of the image so i can call it as length of the image divided by length of the object so longitudinal magnification becomes li divided by lo is it clear to everyone Longitudinal magnification when the object is placed parallel to the principal axis can be written in this form Li by LO. Now, how do I find the value of Li? I can find it out by subtracting V2 from V1 or V1 from V2. Whatever I write, I can take the absolute sign. So I can write it like this V2 minus V1 upon U2 minus U1. And I can take the modulus of this or the magnitude of this. This would become this would become my formula for longitudinal magnification. Do we understand this? Yes or no? Yes or no? Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Now V2 minus V1 is difference in the images of the two points so i can approximately write it like this delta v by delta u yes or no ka magnitude yes or no delta v means difference in the value of v divided by delta u means difference in the value of u yes or no yes sir now i can write a very important point here i can write a very important point here if the object is very small and this is the question that you will get in GEE advanced for small objects. If the object is very small, remember, if the object is large, this is the formula that we use right now on your screen. That is the formula. If the object is large, you can write object is large. This is the formula that you use. What is the formula if the object is small, very small? Longitudinal magnification then becomes minus of dv by du. And as you can see, what difference has come? dv, difference in v becomes, delta v becomes dv, small change in v, delta u becomes du negative sign only comes for correcting sign of the equation do you understand this yes or no yes sir yes sir clear yes sir. that formula is valid sir the object is excuse me sir yes beta sir once can you please explain once again what do you want me to explain is the length of the image divided by the length of the object li by lo is it clear yes sir i have found out the length of the image look at this green thing this green thing is the length of the image you subtract the two values you will get the length of the image you subtract the two things you will get the length of the object yes or no so it yes, is v2 sir. minus v1 divided by u2 minus u1 you take the modulus V2 minus V1 can be written as delta V. U2 minus U1 can be written as delta U. For small object, it becomes minus dV by du. What is the point that is troubling you, Bacha? Tell me. Is it clear? What is troubling you? Tell me. Shall we move ahead? Yes sir. yes, sir. Sure? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, <clears throat> now, if the object is small, we can write the longitudinal magnification as minus dv by du. Now, we can find out the value of minus dv by du with a very small trick. 
or a very small concept. We know that 1 by u plus 1 by v is 1 by f, yes or no? This is the mirror formula, yes or no? This is the mirror formula, yes or no? Yes, sir. Now, if you differentiate this formula, and I hope that you remember differentiation. If I differentiate this formula, if I differentiate this formula, remember, <clears throat> V and U are the things that can vary when the object moves. Or if you place object at different, different points, V and U can vary. But this F is a constant because it depends on only on the mirror. If you don't change the mirror, F remains constant. Yes or no? If I differentiate this equation, I will get minus du by u square minus dv by v square is equal to 0. This is pure max and I have done nothing but I have differentiated. The slide is paused. Oh, sorry, 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 I forgot. Okay, so 1 by u plus 1 by v is 1 by f. That is my mirror formula. Yes or no? We, we remember this formula? Yes, sir. u plus 1 by v is 1 by f. What I have done here is I have just differentiated this equation once. And I get this formula. Even if you don't understand this derivative, there is no problem. I don't want you to remember this. I just want you to remember the result that we get. From 1 by u plus 1 by v, 1 by f, we get this by derivative. If you don't remember this, not a problem. I am not going to get into the derivative part. Sir, with uh, respect to what we have differentiated. We don't have to differentiate with respect to anything, just differentiate. You can differentiate with respect to u, you will again get the same result. You differentiate with respect to v, you will get the same result. You differentiate with respect to anything in the universe, you will get this result. Okay? Have you understood this? To differentiate with respect to anything, you will get this. And I don't want to get into de derivative because that's maths. My objective is not to teach you maths, right? Right now, what I want you to understand is when I differentiate this equation and when you complete your derivative, this is the simplest derivative that you will ever get. When you differentiate this equation from there, from this equation that we have achieved, we can get the value of dv by du and that is the only thing that you got to remember that from this equation I can get minus dv by du as v by u ka whole square. That is the only point that you need to remember right now because with this point what happens is my longitudinal magnification becomes very wonderful. Why it becomes wonderful, my dear friends? Because ML is LI by LO, first formula. For small objects, ah, so uh, we can write it as delta V by delta U for bigger objects. But for smaller objects, I have a wonderful formula now. For a smaller object, ML is minus dV by du. Minus dV by du can be written as V by u ka whole square. And if you remember, magnification, your transverse magnification was minus V by u. Yes or no? If I square that equation, that will become your transverse magnification ka whole square and that is the formula that you should remember the yellow one the yellow one is valid for bigger objects the green one is valid for smaller objects and that is what you got to remember do we understand this Anyone yes, having any doubt, remember, no, please let me know. I understand that you might be having doubt in this step. How did I get this step? 
the step that I am now crossing, it is irrelevant to the discussion. You don't have to remember that step. You just have to remember that minus dv by du will come as v by u ka square. Okay, do we understand this? Yeah, this yeah. is the only thing that you should remember. And whatever I have done, I have done no miracle. I have just differentiated the equation. I could have straight away written that minus dv by du will come as v by u cos square. But since you are maths guys, taken PCM, that's why I told you how it is done. In the neat wala class, I have just given the result because result it was that matters. Remember, JEE -E main is 100% a test of your speed. JE -E advance is 70% a test of your speed. 30% maybe your knowledge. You have to remember things. Once you understand them, remember them. You don't have to derive them. So if, if in the examination hall, you have to derive the value of minus dv by du, you will lose precious time. And time is a luxury that we don't have. Do we understand this? Can I move forward ahead, further, further ahead in life? Yes, sir. This was the two types of linear magnification. One was transverse and the other one was longitudinal but remember whenever we have an object whenever we get an image or whenever we have an object that object always will not be a one-dimensional object yes or no we might get objects we might get objects which are two-dimensional and therefore, we'll have to understand the second type of magnification. And the second type of magnification is known as superficial. Superficial or you can call it aerial. Magnification in area. Man, uh, superficial or aerial magnification. Now the difference between linear magnification and superficial magnification is all of you to see. Can you tell me what is the difference? It is very evident. What is the difference? What is the difference between linear magnification and superficial or area or aerial magnification? Area has magnified, sir. Area has magnified, yes, but you can put it in a different way. Linear magnification only happens when the object is... Object is... Object is... Placed perpendicular to the plane of axis. Object is... Linear, one dimension. Aerial expansion or aerial magnification happens when the object is when the object is placed in 2D. Yes, that is the simplest way to understand this. Whenever you have an object which has an area which is a two-dimensional thing, you will have superficial or aerial expansion. Uh, why I'm saying expansion? Magnification because this also comes in expansion. That is why expansion, expansion, expansion. As you can see here, my dear friends, it has a height. Object has a height. Object has a width. Object gets magnified in the width as well as the object gets magnified in the height as well. If I, if I, if I, if I, if I, if I, if I write superficial expansion as MS, if I write superficial expansion as ms, how will I define it? M standing for magnification, S standing for superficial, you can also write it MA, magnification in area. How will I define it? Remember, transverse magnification was height of the object, height of the image divided by height of object. Longitudinal magnification was length of the image divided by the length of the object. What is superficial or area expansion? Ah, again expansion. Superficial or aerial magnification? Area of the image by area of the object. That is absolutely correct, my dear friends. 
this will be area of image divided by area of object as simple as it gets no complications whatsoever area of the image divided by area of the object i can now simply find it out ms shall be equal to as you can see area of the image will be m where m is your transverse magnification into w naught width of the object multiplied by m into h naught divided by w naught into h naught things are going to get cancelled as you can see dung 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 and i have this legendary result superficial expansion again expansion superficial magnification is transverse magnification ka squared anyone having any doubt this is the time that you raise your doubts if you have any I hope everyone is noting it down. Yes or no? No, yes. Whatever we are discussing, bacha, everything is gold dust. It is precious. It is more than precious. It is everything that we have right now. And remember, questions are going to come from this particular thing. Will be straight away carried from here. If you remember simple things, you will be doing. create in whatever exams you are going to appear have you noted this down everyone three types of uh, magnification yes, we have seen in fact two types of magnification we have seen linear magnification for one dimensional object aerial magnification for two dimensional object and here uh, again i show you the same thing but now it is in a table where everything is written in one space so you can just have a look at this linear magnification my dear friends is uh, magnification is length or height it is of two types as you can see transverse when the object is perpendicular and longitudinal when the object is along the 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 principal axis height of the image divided by height of the object we have seen the formulas for transverse magnification length of the image divided by length of the object for longitudinal magnification if the object is small this is the formula you can also find out length of the image from the length of the object if you go on to aerial magnification is a magnification in area and you can easily see the superficial magnification or radial magnification will be given by this formula yes or no no yes do we understand this everything that we have discussed is written in the shortest possible table the shortest possible form anyone has any doubts this is a time that you can raise them No doubt, sir. Okay. Shall we move uh, ahead in life? Sir. Okay. Now, sometimes you might have more than one mirror. Sometimes you might have more than one mirror, and we will get to those questions where you have more than one mirror, or you have successive. reflections now how will you get the magnification when you have more than one reflection or more than two reflection i hope everyone has noted this down sir what if a linear object is placed with an angle theta to the principal axis magnification nothing you just look at the height of the object and uh, from there you can find out you just find out the height of the object you can find out the height of the image 
a similar question actually came in uh, this year J advance it was at an angle doesn't make any difference I'll show you that question if uh, just let me uh, let me open it up where is that where does it make a, any difference with uh, making an angle theta with no no it I, I'll show you the question don't worry I have that question so what what you have in your mind I have it in the form of a question just give me a minute just give me a minute and I will open it up and yes, I, I'll show it to you the same question came in GE advance that's why I remember it where is that okay, this thing should be kept here okay, it's not here I forget things I keep them uh, safe and then I where is this just a moment i'll just show it to you no worry here is this this one here i think it was okay it was in paper one or paper two let me check it out just give me a minute i would be able to find out this question and again uh, remember i'm just showing you the question so that whatever problems you have can be solved in terms of a question and this is the question that came in this year's j advance this year's j advance now you must understand that we might not be able to solve the question because this question is not from mirror this question is lens this was a uh, this year's JE advance question, object was placed at an angle, a rod of length L is placed at an angle and then you are supposed to find out this angle alpha. So that was the question that came in this year's JE advance. The only difference is right now, we are not dealing with uh, lenses, we are dealing with mirrors. So how do you find it out? It's as simple as that. This is one point, yes or no, let me call this point as A. This will be the image A dash, yes or no? Yes, sir. yes, sir. You can find out the position of this point. You know the value of U. You know the focal length of this mirror. Let us take it as a mirror or a lens. Doesn't matter. Only the formula changing. In mirror formula, it is 1 by U plus 1 by U, V is 1 by F. In uh, lens formula, it is 1 by V minus 1 by U is 1 by F. You can find out the value of this A dash, yes or no? You can find out this value of V dash, yes or no? Yes, sir. What next? You take this point here. Let me call this as B. You can find out the value of this one. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Once you get the value of this B, you can find out this value of B dash. Yes or no? Because now your U becomes this. This becomes your U dash. And this becomes your V dash. Yes or no, my dear friends? Yes, sir. Voila! You have done J advanced question. Once you get the value of this A dash B dash, the question was asked, find out the value of this angle alpha. You know the value of A dash B dash. This is the magnification that we are talking about. You can find the height of the object and the height of the image. Yes or no? You can yes, calculate the value of alpha. Am I clear? Height of yes, the sir. image is given to you already. You don't have to find it out. It's already given. Height of the object is already known. So you know this value. You can find out the value of this angle alpha. So congratulations. You have just completed or done a tough question in JEE Advanced. And since you asked for it, therefore I showed you the same question. Am I clear? That yes, was your sir. doubt, Bacha? That was your doubt? Three. That was your doubt, yes or no? Is N value is 3, sir. What, beta? Value of N is 3. Value of? N. Value three. of N is 3. Now it is 6, beta. Wow. This 6 angle is 30 degrees. N is 6, not 3. N is 6, not 3. Well done. Yes, N is 6, not 3. Okay, sir. Okay. That was your doubt. I hope it is clear now. Yes, sir. Shall we move ahead in life? Don't worry. When you do lenses, we will do this question. 
play simple you can do it right now the only thing is you don't know the lens formula and i just don't want to move into the future without uh, cementing my past if i cement my past my future will be better okay since you asked for it and i just remembered it that is why i showed it to you okay in fact uh, I, I said now there was one more question where this object was moving yes or no we'll do that question M maybe tomorrow we'll do that question maybe tomorrow i'll show you that question as well that was in paper number two in this year j advance oh optics was all everywhere optics was everywhere in this year j advance we'll do this question tomorrow and i'll just give you the formula and you will be able to solve it on your own probably you probably will not need even my help in solving this question because right now whatever i have told you that is good enough to solve this question that was there in je advance again this was paper 2 from je advance this was paper 2 from je advance and as simple as this this is the next one from je advance of this year paper number 2 the only difference is paper number 2 easy question we'll do it tomorrow probably so by tomorrow i will be dealing with the velocity of object and velocity of the image i told you i showed you this question before also right that time i told you that you know we are dealing with plane mirrors and we are not dealing with curved mirrors today probably i'll do the theory for this curved mirrors and probably tomorrow we will be able to solve this question okay don't worry i've got all the questions uh, with me that we are supposed to solve right now let us concentrate on this one shall we move ahead in life yes sir no sir shall we move ahead yes sir okay now uh, now uh, we must understand uh, uh, certain things that uh, you should remember and you should never forget uh, that is where is the object and what is the position of image and where it is formed it is very important that you remember this thing and i am going to show you in the form of a table here where is the object and where do you get the image and this is very important from any point of view and then i will show you the diagrams one by one remember and keep this in mind because these simple things may come as direct questions or they may come as questions where you might have to use them indirect questions i call them remember we'll have to remember this and use this in exam as they come why is this noise coming noise is coming from your end i guess okay position of the object and position of the image there are six positions of the object number one number two number three i hope everyone knows these positions yes or no sir say to turn up the mic of in tarnaka yes beta say the tarnaka branch to turn up the mic okay that's coming from the other branch right that's what you're saying okay uh, say, not say them to turn up the mic sir you can hear me right let me mute that uh, thing probably i can do that from here uh, 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 uh. mute okay it's gone now right yes sir okay six position of object for concave mirror similarly you will have six position of object for a convex lens so you have to remember all these things very important ones six position of object for a concave mirror and how do i remember this position i'll just show you in a small diagram this is how i remember them this is how i recollect them so what do i do is i just make uh, i just make uh, one uh, concave uh, mirror and then i make the important points and i mark the important points on this uh, principal axis the first important point is c do you remember c C is okay. I think I muted the other uh, class and center of the curvature. Center of curvature. Okay. The next point is F. What is this? The last point is P. Now, how are these six positions? How do we get these six positions? The first position is object is at infinity. Do we understand this? 
object focus. focus. Sorry, Please image focus. focus. Okay. Let us first discuss the points, then we will go to the position of the image. The first position is object is at infinity. What is the second position? We call it object between infinity and C. That means you can call it as beyond C. You can call it between infinity and C. So basically what is happening is the first position is object is very far and now slowly 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 we are moving towards the mirror do we understand this the first position is infinity now i am moving closer so this becomes my second position my second position is between c and infinity what is my third position between c and f no Not c my third position is what is this my third position is at C. My third position is at C. What is my fourth position? Between C and F, sir. Yes. That is my fourth position between C and F. What is my fifth position? Focus. My fifth position is my focus, correct? What is my sixth position? Between focus and pole. Between focus and pole. These are the six positions that I can never forget. For concave mirrors, I have six positions. But for convex mirror, I only have two. So that is simple. For concave mirror, I have six positions. We'll have to understand and understand and understand and have that printed in your head. That even if you are in your wildest dream, if I ask you, object is here, where is the image? You should be able to tell me what is happening. So that is so important. So these are the six positions that we are talking about. And the first of these positions is when the object is at where? Object is at infinity. Do we understand this? Yes or no? You understand this, yes or no? Yes, sir. Object is at infinity. Now remember, whenever the object is at infinity, your rays are always parallel to principal axis. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Where are they going to meet? At focus. At focus. But it will only happen if... It will only happen if... Rays are parallel to principal axis. Angle of incidence is very small. Because in one question, I, I'm going to show you. It's not going to be meeting here. And that is what you have to be guarding against. And the angle of incidence is very small and the aperture of the mirror is also small. Do we understand this or it has gone above our heads? You understand this? Yes, sir. <laughs> the magnification is very, very small, less than one. And we call it diminished. Yes or no? We understand this? Yes, sir. The image is real and the image would be inverted. Everyone has noted this down. Everyone knows this. Yes or no? Everyone understand this? Everyone knows this? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Have you noted it down? Yes, sir. sir. These are uh, golden uh, points and these are made up of gold dust. Do you understand the meaning of gold dust? Gold dust is a 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 is 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 very very costly. Remember this. Now, have you noted this down? You have, you have made this table, this entire table, so that everything would be at one place and in one glance you will you should be able to remember everything. That is why I am showing this table. If I would have made this table, I would have just spent a lot of time. Have we noted this down? Yes or no? No, sir. No, sir. Just the first point I am talking about, Bacha, not the other ones. Other ones I am going to explain, then you will write. Have you noted on the first point? Yes, sir. Then comes the diagram, sir. This is the diagram, sir. Object is at infinity. 
here 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 what uh, what the diagram shows is rays are not parallel to the principal axis so if the rays are parallel to the principal axis they will get focused as the focus but if they are not parallel to principal axis you will have the image which will be formed like this do we understand this so we are understanding two things in one two things in one two things in one do we understand this yes or no no yes if the image if the ray would have been coming like this my dear friends then they would have passed through focus if the angle of incidence was very less do we understand this my dear friends so what i have done hatch 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 is the case where they are actually coming parallel to principal axis the case which is drawn here is they are not parallel to principal axis they are coming at an angle till the image is formed at the focus the difference between the two scenarios is in my case that i have drawn image is very small it's just like a point in case of the diagram that is drawn the image is actually not a point it is somewhat bigger than a point do we understand this or this has gone above our heads saying bye bye i am going don't worry understood sir understood sir then sir we will move closer from infinity and the next next point that we are going to see i hope everyone has drawn this diagram if you may not draw this diagram this is just to show you that this is how the image is formed you may not draw the diagram if you if you have written the 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 the, the column thing you don't have to draw the diagram because no one is going to ask you the diagram diagram is only for your understanding purpose not so important point number 2 Where is the object placed now? Green thing. It is placed beyond, beyond center, of center of curvature. Now remember, where is the image formed? Very important point. It is formed between F and two F. It is diminished. Magnification is less than one. It is real and it is inverted. So basically, what is happening? What you want to understand is when the object is at infinity, image is very small. but when you are coming from infinity towards the center of curvature image starts to become bigger do we understand this object coming closer image becoming bigger do we understand this what has gone above right saying bye bye i am going don't worry about me i hope everyone is noting down i hope everyone is noting down and not yes, living in the class <clears throat> everyone noted down yes sir everyone in the class i don't see raise hands we are noting yes, sir. sir wait for a second noting, sir okay note down because these are very very important things Even if I wake you up at two o'clock in the night and ask you where the object is here, where is the image? You say, "Sir, here, here, here." Okay, I'll see it now. The, the image is here. It is diminished. It is this. It is that. You should be able to tell me that. Shall I move ahead in life? Life has to move on. Shall I move? Yes. dancer ah. this is the diagram sir and again you don't need to draw the diagram this is just to tell you how it happens as you can see this gentleman object is beyond c image is formed between c and f object is larger compared to the image image is smaller you may not have to draw the diagram this is just to show you that this is how it happens that takes us to the to the third position and which is a very intriguing position because you have the object the blue one at the center of curvature at this point my dear point a very good point and what happens 
you will have the image also at the same point and it is of the same size as the object it is real and inverted anyone having any doubt on this so whenever you get a question that image is formed at the same place you will have to think on those lines center of curvature something some somewhere center of curvature has to come do we understand this yes or no that one of our heads only position where you get magnification one remember in mirror everywhere magnification is one in plane mirror in concave mirror only one position it is one when it is infinity magnification is almost zero when it is coming closer image is becoming bigger at the center of curvature my dear friends image becomes same size as the object i hope you are understanding what i uh, what i am stressing on yes or no image is getting bit image is getting bigger and bigger do we understand this my dear friends are do we understand this yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. have you noted it down bacha yes sir yes sir the, uh, then sir uh, this thing sir everyone has noted this down and this is the diagram that uh, that uh, that uh, that uh, that uh, that uh, that, uh, that uh, shows it all object is at the center of curvature erect like this image is like this inverted same size same place now i ask a question now the object is going to come between c and f what will happen to magnification now if you can understand the the pattern you you can tell me what will happen to the magnification what will happen to the magnification my dear friends are don't know shameful what will happen to the magnification this is just catching the pattern you must have played this uh, this uh, this uh, or this uh, uh, this game in uh, in your uh, lower class catching the pattern seeing the pattern and telling what is going to come next this is the same game catching the pattern yes what will happen when the object is between center of curvature and focus what will happen to the magnification of the image as you can see and sorry you could not tell me it will become more than one yes or no object is getting closer 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 image getting bigger 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 do we understand this do we understand this yes sir yes sir so object is between focus and center of curvature image is beyond center of curvature so reverse is happening now reverse is happening when the object was beyond center of curvature image was between c and f did you see that the blue line uh, the green line when the object was beyond c image was between c and f now the object is between c and f image is beyond 2f do we understand this or oh, it has gone above are saying bye bye i am going yes sir it is real it is inverted have you noted it down my dear friends Yes or no? No or yes? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then, sir, this diagram, sir. Diagram number four, sir. Object is here, my dear sir. Between C and F, image is beyond F, beyond two F, and it is greater. The magnification is greater than one. Basically, what it means is. basically what it means is the image has now become more or bigger or larger than the object yes or no no yes can you move on to the next point everyone is noting it down and everyone is remembering how to note it down i am telling you all my secret recipes that i have created over the years shall i move on to the next one yes sir yes sir then sir this is case number 5 sir and if you look with all your eyes open 
all your eyes open let me let me let me let me let me let me tell you my way of remembering it <clears throat> you look at uh, you look at uh, you look at uh, you look at uh, what you look at uh, case number 2 and you look at case number 5 from where i see are they opposite of each other oh sorry not 2 and 5 Ah. One and five, sir. Hey, hey! Don't take that suspense out. Let me first create that hype. Looking at uh, looking at uh, two and four, are they opposite of each other? Yes or no? Yes, sir. In two, object is beyond two f. Image is between f and two f. In four, object is between. F and 2F image is beyond 2F. So from where I see, it is opposite of each other. Now look at the green ones, one and five. Are they opposite of each other? Yes, sir. Yes, they are opposite of each other. Why they are opposite of each other? Now the object is at focus, and therefore the image is at infinity. So it is the opposite of this. Magnification is too much. A smaller object will just look like sun, moon. It is real, and it will be inverted. Do we understand this, or this has gone above? Right, saying bye bye. I'm going. Don't stop me. Yes, sir. I hope everyone is noting it down at the same time. Have you noted it down? One and five are opposite of each other. Two and four are opposite of each other. Three has no companion because it is very peculiar. Image and object, hey, right? object and image, same point, same position, magnification one, same size. Well done. This is equal. Have you noted this down? Are? No, sir. Okay. I'll give you time. Don't worry. Case number five. Object at focus. Image at infinity. Anyone having any doubt? Please ask now. No doubt, sir. Shall I show you the diagram? Note it down, sir. Here comes the diagram, my dear friends. Here comes the diagram, and that will take us to the most promising of all these, the most enticing one of all these. Have you noted it down? Everyone, my dear friends, don't need to draw the diagram. Diagram is just for your feel-good factor. Nothing else. You draw the diagram. Well done. If not, no worries. But you have to remember all these things in the way that I have told you. Shall I move ahead in life? The sixth case. Yes, the class is online. I can see everyone there. Well done. Now the class is gone. Can I move on to the next case, the last case? Yes, sir. And here it comes. Yes, sir. The last case. Object between pole and focus. And this is a very peculiar case. Was something has drastically changed here? What has drastically changed here? Tell me, what has changed in this case? And it's on. It's on the extreme right hand side. The thing that has changed is the image has become virtual. 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 And erect. And erect. Virtual. That's why erect. Virtual and erect. And also, it is magnified. V is greater than U. You will have to remember this particular case: concave mirror. And then we'll write everything together. So first, you note this down: <coughs> concave mirror. And I'll try to. You have seen this table. You have seen the diagram. Then I'll try to put everything together in one statement. And if you can remember that one statement, you would do 
any question that comes in this type of things everyone noted the sound no sir no sir yes sir yes sir shall i move ahead sir yes sir again a simple sir diagram object is uh, is 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 here between the focus and the pole and the image is here on the other side virtual side virtual image do we understand this yes or no no yes yes sir anyone have noted this down yes sir then <clears throat> this is the smaller version of the bigger table everything is self explanatory here for quick revision this is the smaller version of the bigger table now from the smaller version of the bigger table or the bigger version of the bigger table or all these cases put together may i ask you in one line in one sentence what type of image if i may ask a question what type of image can a concave mirror form and what kind of image a concave mirror cannot form and this is what which encompasses everything that we have learned so far in one line or one sentence that one line or one sentence we would be doing the next class because i'll give you time to go through what we have done in today's class and remember this just like you have not forgotten a b c d e f g h i j k l m n o p q r s t u v w x y z or z we should not forget what we have done in today's class because it would be a crime it would be worse than a murder but you're going to do you're going to murder felix if you if you if you if you if you forget what we have done today so i hope that you don't forget anyone has any doubts please come up and ask me the doubt in this yes no no yes i guess there are no doubts then uh, it is my humble duty to just uh, give you a quick recap of what we have done in today's class we have seen linear magnification and superficial magnification linear magnification is of two types transverse and longitudinal we have seen the formula for transverse and longitudinal we have seen aerial magnification is the magnification in area if there is a two dimensional object we have also seen the six different cases of image formed by a concave Sir. mirror we will be expanding on this in the next class and we will try to wind up this thing and move on to some problems so i'll see you in the next class take Sir. care